Hello all. Welcome to episode 5. So because this series is about veganism and intersectionality, and intersectionality isn't a term a good number of people might be familiar with, I thought I'd talk about it and why particularly it's important to vegan ad advocacy. Geek Feminism Wiki describes intersectionality as, quote, a concept often used in critical theories to describe the ways in which oppressive institutions, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, xenophobia, classism, etc., are interconnected and cannot be examined separately from one another. <clears throat> the idea of intersectionality or intersectional theory was first introduced by legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw in her, in her uh, 1989 essay, Demarginalizing the Intersection of Race and Sex, a Black Feminist Critique of Anti-Discrimination Doctrine, Feminist Theory, and Anti-Racist Politics. Crenshaw centers the thesis of her essay on what she describes as, quote, the multidimensionality of black women's experience with the, with the single axis analysis that distorts this experience. Basically, black women experience racialized sexism and sexualized racism. And as such, they don't experience racism exactly the same as black men do, nor sexism the same way white women do. Since then, intersectionality has been expanded within some within feminist circles to do a study of the ways oppressive systems are interconnected. Under this umbrella, w mainstream Western feminism has come under fire in the past few years for its perceived marginalization of trans women, women of color, disabled women, women of lower income, and other marginalized women. Keep in mind, people who are marginalized in some ways can still benefit from privilege in other ways. I used myself as an example in my last video. I am a queer black woman with mental illness. I've also benefited from cis privilege, ability privilege, and class privilege. However, the privileges I've benefited from in no way cancel out the areas wherein I lack privilege, and vice versa. The same can be said of most other people. This is the reason that, quote, check your privilege is not meant as an insult, just a request for self-awareness. Everyday Feminism, a feminist blog that strives for an intersectional approach to feminism, states, Intersectionality is a framework that must be applied to all social justice work, a frame that recognizes the multiple aspects of identity that enrich our lives and experiences and that co compound and complicate oppressions and marginalizations. So femi feminism is all well and good, but why does intersectionality matter to vegan advocacy? To me, Appro to me, approaching vegan advocacy, and any social justice advocacy really, with an intersectional approach is key in advocating the most effective way. Because while many vegans might take the mindset that it doesn't matter how the quote vegan message is spread, as long as it's spread and gains attention, I consider this a dangerous mindset in all honesty. Because it leads to the notion that when it comes to advocacy, anything goes. And is that really what we want? Is it worth it to push veganism via privileged positions like it's easy to be vegan or framing any reasons given for not being vegan as excuses? Not even trying to be aware of the realities of others? Is it worth it to promote, quote, carving the fuck up as not only a weight loss solution but also a cure for depression, anxiety, PTSD, anorexia, and other mental illnesses, as well as guaranteed prevention against cancer and other diseases? Is it worth it to push the cause of animal liberation through misogyny or using alienating tactics like comparing animal slaughter to black slavery or the Jewish Holocaust? Is it worth it to scold and shame people for, for buying $1 hamburgers and cheap fried chicken parts, yet never bother to look into how much healthy vegan food is offered in school cafeterias, or why people are not earning a living wage that they could afford to buy vegan food? or how people are supposed to balance one or more jobs, a family, and finding a grocery store? Is it worth it to make pro-vegan videos that say that non-vegans don't deserve to live? Or videos that tell a wide audience of people that anti-racist, anti-imperialist, LGBTQ rights, and feminist movements don't matter because animals are being exploited and killed? I don't think it's worth it to alienate a eight people from a cause that, quite honestly, needs all the support it can get. Ugh. Yes, I should uh, um, address this common defense. Yeah, it is true that, um, billboards that use fat shaming to promote veganism, 
exhibits that compare animal slaughter to slavery and the Holocaust, and these videos put up by very um, popular YouTube channels do get attention. But what kind of attention are they really getting? This is why intersectionality is important into the vegan movement. Because it, it does matter how things like that are received. It does matter if you alienate people and who's watching and who's agreeing. You don't, we don't, I don't, I don't want vegan advocacy to become just one big echo chamber where the only people who are seeing this are people who already are vegan and already agree with these people or these organizations. This is why we need to be more inclusive. That's all for this video, and as always, peace and love.